scientists announced they sequenced the oldest DNA to date, two million year old DNA found in Greenland, revealing an ancient ecosystem, unlike anything existing today. Finding DNA in the deep time context is amazing. It's really important for, for how this field is gonna advance. It's really the most remarkable new thing since I've been working in this area. The movie Jurassic Park made the idea of recovering old DNA popular. But successfully sequencing really ancient DNA has proved elusive. The irony is that in 2005, I did a review paper and I said, well, it's, it's not possible that DNA can survive more than one million years, right? The latest work by Eska Willerslev and his team extends the record of ancient DNA by about another million years. To find the DNA, researchers drilled in the Cap Cobrehaven Formation in Greenland to collect soil samples. They found evidence of ancient living things, including horseshoe crabs, caribou, and even mastodon, using DNA found in soil. Every single cell contains DNA. If a mastodon urinates or put feces on the ground, you know, it's DNA. You can't identify it after, you know, some time, but the DNA will survive. It's likely that the ancient DNA was uniquely preserved by a combination of the cold and some minerals in the two million year old sediment. DNA is electrically charged and many sediment particles are also electrically charged. So certain sediment particles such as clay will bind DNA. I mean, the DNA will basically stick to it. The binding basically protects the DNA from the enzymes that would otherwise chop it up. That bond may have kept that DNA intact for far longer than scientists, including Willerslev, had thought possible. But to retrieve the DNA from the soil and separate it from everything else in it required state-of-the-art technology and techniques developed over many years of trial and error. I mean, I don't even know how to describe it, right? I mean, you have been sitting working on something for, for 15 years that doesn't work and suddenly there's a breakthrough. It's like, just then, oh my God, right? Sounds very boring to many people at first, but you know, this is the fundamental thing that changes everything. And suddenly you can have samples that you thought had no DNA at all. It turns out they did have DNA, but it's stuck and all you're doing is releasing it. The next challenge was to compare the DNA to vast libraries of all other known DNA to identify close relatives. The plants and animals they found in this ancient ecosystem do not exist together today. So for example, we find a horseshoe crab, which is a, a crab that is found way, way to the south today. And also suggests that the ocean at that time was way warmer than what we see today. Unlike the polar desert that exists here today, this forest ecosystem could have been considerably warmer. But like Greenland today, existed in extreme seasonality. Months of summer sun and complete darkness in the winter months. I think that's really stunning. It's still stunning to me to think of how warm it is. And that you have life over time that has adapted to the extreme seasonality. Understanding the lineage of these ancient living things could help researchers understand how those that exist today evolved and how they might adapt to a changing climate. If it works, it's going to change everything for us in terms of thinking about how ecosystems respond to climate change. All of this is like building blocks. You get one building block, you don't have a structure. You get two, you still don't have a structure. You have 10 and you can start building something.